Good evening, Commonwealth, and thanks for watching the Channel 2 News. I'm Brad Rosala. And I'm Jillian Angeline. Let's take a look at tonight's top stories. The pastor of a local church will answer to a judge about vehicular homicide. Also tonight, a former aging director is charged with corruption. And some little creatures take baby steps to get out to the world. In sports, one basketball league sets up its championship finale. Stay with us. These stories and more are next. Many people think that one can of beer is not an issue, that it is still safe to drive. I only drink one can, so relax. Or I only drink one can. You sure? Yes, I'm sure. Buzz driving is drunk driving. Sauce. At an undisclosed McDonald's location, there is a club. Inside, the best of the best gather. And tonight, they welcome their newest member, Mr. LeBron James. And what does one serve the best basketball player in the world? The new bacon clubhouse sandwich, of course. 100% pure beef for chicken on a new artisan roll, all with our famous Big Mac special sauce. Because everyone deserves the best. There's something for everyone to love at McDonald's. You should serve it to everyone. And good evening, Commonwealth. Today is Friday, June 27th, 2014. Well, the pastor of a local church is facing charges of vehicular homicide today. The man was at the wheel in an accident that killed a 36 year old woman and her unborn child who were on their way to church in his van. 58 year old Chang He Daniel Nam appeared before Associate Judge Joseph Camacho on charges of reckless driving, speeding, and failure to ensure that his passengers were wearing seatbelts. According to a report filed by the Department of Public Safety, Nam suffered a bruised left eye and a fractured jaw when he lost control of the van he was driving and struck a power pole in Asperdito. Nam's injuries were evident as he walked into the courtroom. His face was still bruised and he had difficulty speaking. On Sunday, DPS responded to reports of a one-car accident in the eastbound lane of Asperdito. When officers arrived on the scene, they found Nam and three other seriously injured passengers trapped inside of their white Toyota Sienna minivan. DPS fire personnel used the jaws of life to free the passengers before transporting them to the Commonwealth Health Care Center for treatment. Also in the vehicle were a 30-year-old woman and two-year-old boy who survived the crash with a fractured leg and abrasions to his head and shoulder. Officers determined that speed played a significant role in the cause of the crash. The former director for the Department of Aging arrived in Superior Court to face charges that she utilized government resources for personal gain. The Office of the Public Auditor charged Rose Mandala with seven counts of violating the Commonwealth Code, violations that allegedly occurred during her time as the head of the Menomco Center. The charges include theft, theft of services, forgery, use of office, staff, or employees of public office, restraints on the use of public position to obtain benefits for business or social acquaintances, restraints on the use of public supplies, time, and personnel for campaign activities, and misconduct in public office. 
According to court documents, numerous complaints were filed against Mandala dating back to 2009. The documents allege Mandala used government funds to purchase food for a Covenant Party political rally and utilized the aging office kitchen staff to prepare the food in 2009. Court documents also charged Mandala with purchasing materials for her personal residence with funds meant for the Tinian aging office. The documents also allege that Mandala forged the signatures of one of her staffers to purchase nearly $3,000 worth of beverages that were delivered to the Covenant Party headquarters. Mandala also allegedly permitted Covenant Party supporters to use the Office of Aging's kitchen to prepare food for rallies and allowed Covenant Party members to store the food for the rallies inside the aging office's freezers. The charges against Mandala also include allegations that she directed employees to prepare food for the Covenant Party rallies on multiple occasions. Mandala also allegedly overspent on food purchases that enriched her farmer and fisherman friends. The amount of food purchased was so excessive that the food was unable to be consumed before it decomposed on the Office of Aging shelves. One of the most egregious charges levied against Mandala is that she used government funds to purchase fencing materials and had them delivered to her house in Kagman. She then directed Aging Center employees to build her fence in 2009. Mandala's administration originally came under fire when members of the Manapco Center expressed their dissatisfaction with her leadership. The center literally came under fire when one of the vans used to transport members burst into flames during an outing to San Roque. It took months, but the U.S. Senate has now confirmed Guam-born Esther Kiaana as the next OIA Assistant Secretary for Insular Affairs. Channel 2's Washington correspondent Matt K. reports. It took more than nine months from the time President Obama tapped her last year for the Senate to act on Guam-born Hawaiian Esther Kia'ina's nod for the top job at OIA. But it took just seconds for the body to confirm her. Hawaii's Maisie Hirono was presiding. Under the previous order, there will be two minutes of debate prior to a vote on the Kia'ina nomination. Without objection, all time is yielded back. The question now occurs on the nomination. All in favor say aye. All opposed nay. The ayes appear to have it. The ayes do have it. The nomination is confirmed. The Senate Energy Committee favorably reported Kiainis' nomination to the full Senate in December to replace Guam native Tony Babauta, who quit early last year amid an abuse of office probe. Two acting assistant secretaries followed. Then a procedural fight between Democratic Majority Leader Harry Reid and Republicans slowed the nominations process, and Kia Aino was thrown into a lengthy queue after her November confirmation hearing. Kia Aina in November. While my parents are originally from Hawaii, I was born at the U.S. Naval Hospital on the island of Guam, as my father worked for the U.S. Navy in a civilian capacity. My initial years were spent in the village of Asan, where I lived right across from Asan Beach, which was the location where the 3rd Marine Division landed during the liberation of Guam from enemy forces during World War II. Kiaina graduated from San Vicente Elementary and Junior High School. She rose from humble roots to a nearly 20-year career in Washington, working for former Senator Daniel Akaka, Representative Ed Case of Hawaii, and Guam Delegate Robert Underwood. Kiaina worked on Guam lands, war claims, compact impact, higher education, and brown tree snake bills. I believe I have a good understanding of the continuing need to strengthen bilateral federal relationships with each jurisdiction, promote economic development, increase government efficiency and transparency, foster sound natural resources management practices, advance alternative energy goals, and improve quality of life issues. Guam Congresswoman Madeline Bordaglio and the CNMI's Greg Kalili Sablon both congratulated Kia Aina. Bordaglio says Kia Aina has a proven track record of working to advance Pacific Islander issues and will be a strong advocate in the administration for them. Sablon said Kia Aina will bring a new sense of urgency and direction to island needs. Sablon and Kia Aina worked together for late Hawaii Senator Daniel Inoue in the 80s. Interior Secretary Sally Jewell said Kia Aina will be a valuable asset to Interior as it works to further the island's social and economic progress. On Capitol Hill, Matt Kay for KSPN Channel 2 News. Thank you so much, Matt. Governor Eloy Enos is happy to hear Kia Aina is confirmed in Washington, D.C. He hopes to congratulate her and invite her to visit the Northern Marianas.
it's good that she's finally on board. And again, I don't want to bombard them with all our issues and so forth. I want to give her time to go in. She's, she's, she's responsible for insular areas, Guam, American Samoa, Virgin Islands, and so forth. Well, looking for a unique piece of art for your home or business? Local artists might have what you're looking for when they put their talents together on display during the third annual Art in the Park. The event takes place tomorrow, June 28th at the CNMI Museum on Middle Road from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. CNMI Arts Council will host seven local artists during this year's event. If you can't make it out tomorrow, you can still find a wide selection of local art at the Arts Council booth at the Liberation Day Festival Grounds. The Arts Council booth opens tonight and will feature works from local artists through July 6th. Well, some Garapan residents have already experienced the sights and sound of progress in their village. The Commonwealth Utilities Corporation promised more of the same as the CNMI Water Task Force Leak Detection and Repair Project continues. Beginning Monday, June 30th, CUC work crews will move the focus of the project to a pair of main streets in the downtown Garapan area. Orchid Street and Micro Beach Road will be under construction between Beach Road and Coral Tree Avenue through the end of September. CUC crews will work to isolate lines to detect and repair leaks and replace valves and hydrants. While crews work to upgrade the infrastructure, residents will experience temporary water outages, changes in pressure, and temporarily cloudy or discolored water in the lines. While none of that sounds like good news, CUC said the temporary inconvenience will result in improved water service and lower water costs. Superior Court Judge David Wiseman rejects Beth Sunshine's motion for a shortened time and the emergency motion to affect the temporary restraining order. The documents say the court did not find good cause to bypass a critical aspect of the case to address Beth Sunshine's request. Wiseman notes Beth Sunshine is not a party to the case at this time. He said he will address the applicant's motion to intervene on July 1st. The court did not find Beth Sunshine would suffer any injury by keeping the hearing date at July 1st and moving it up. Wiseman said June 30th is 90 days after the signing of Public Law 18-43 and notes the Lottery Commission is not prohibited from issuing a license after June 30th. In a footnote, the judge says this is not a final ruling about the commission, calling it an interim ruling with the right to modify it later. One casino applicant finishes a survey of some residents on island about their habits and opinions on ways to improve aspects of the island. The Ipsos survey administered by Best Sunshine, one of two casino applicants, is complete. Survey leader Dr. Carmen Fernandez confirms there were about 600 surveys administered. Well, we really wanted to be able to reach out to the people and get their opinions. Um, and uh, it was actually also included as part of the company's proposal uh, for the uh, integrated resort. Uh, so it was, it's a very co uh, important component of the, the whole vision for, for the company. Uh, and we just felt, you know, we just want to stress that we really felt it critical to be able to reach out to the people, you know, get their opinions, um, hear, hear what they have to share. Sources tell KSPN some residents believe the survey asked questions that were too personal. That has not been brought to my attention. Um, we, for sure, the survey was voluntary, so if there was any portion of the survey that pe people felt uncomfortab uh, uh, com uncomfortable about, then they didn't have to respond to it. And, and okay. of course, certainly everything is confidential. One question asks, do you go to church normally? Given that, you know, we're, we're primarily a Catholic community, uh, and so that's probably why that question was asked. Another asks, if an institution or a business provides a payment with no conditions attached, how will you spend the money? Here I think really this is a language issue. Mm -hmm. um, I think the, the intention of the question is, is to ask, you know, what, what is mo most important for you? If you could get a donation, if, if, if money could be given to the community for assistance, what would be most important to you? And so I think it's a language issue. Did you, did you read over the questions before you, were, before you distributed them out to... And then see students. And yeah. The team was supposed to do that. Uh, unfortunately, I didn't have uh, access to the questions, you know, be before it was uh, put out. Fernandez says Ipsos helped develop the questions and wording. The Ipsos survey asks for the subject's monthly per capita 
family income. Survey Administrator Grace Fu says it is a standard question for a survey like a census to help get a greater gauge of the community. When subjects completed the survey, the surveyors handed them cookies. Fernandez said it was a token of appreciation. And we found that in most of the homes, there, you know, there were there were some little kids home and stuff, and they really appreciated it. So it was just a gesture of appreciation, just a small small token to leave behind. It's kind of a kind of a cultural thing too that when you visit, you know, you want to leave something or bring something with you. It was handed out at the very end of the survey after all the questions had been answered and everything was done. So right as they were about to leave, they said, you know, as a token of appreciation, thank you for your time. Surveyors were paid $100 per day for three days of work. It was kept a surprise from the surveyors and everybody until the very end. IPSIS is doing the data analysis per a contracted agreement with Best Sunshine. The report is set to be released to the public next Friday, July 4th. It just would be data. Uh, it would have the responses on each of the questions, the numbers, like let's say, for example, the very last question is kind of like a ranking. The State of the Commonwealth Address, the first in five years, is set for Monday at the Multipurpose Center in Sisupi. The public meeting and first joint session of the 18th CNMI Legislature will start at 10 a.m. It will include speeches from Congressman Greg Kilili Sablon and Governor Eloy Enos. The formal ceremony will include the posting of colors, invocation, and roll call. This will be the first SOCA since May 27, 2009. Eno says Navy Admiral Tillman Payne will be one of the dignitaries in attendance. Eno says his speech will not focus on the casino issue. Casino is going to be embedded in the overall revenue generation theme, you know, um, because uh, it's current litigation, so, you know, I, well, we'll let that process take its course. Um, we can just say that it's unfortunate that we, we uh, have to go this route. And, you know, now can't really tell which way it's going to go because we have to respect the, the judicial process. He says the administration should still look for ways to generate new revenue, but he believes the more the delay in the casino process, the harder it will be financially. He says the 25% reimbursement to retirees is already owed for one year. We're hoping that if uh, the license is issued this year, then we can allocate the first year of license for that first year of indebtedness. But if we go into the second year, we're going to be using that, that first year license for last year's debt. And so we're going to be playing catch up. The public is invited to attend the SOCA on Monday. Well, coming up, two tiny turtles tumble toward the turbulent tides. And he's going to say that five times fast during the commercial break. Also, Liberation Day activities kick off tonight. The future. There was a time when that seemed so far away. But as time goes by, it seems closer and closer to arm's reach. But to us, the future means more than tablets and smartphones. It's a connection, a window to the world, to see through the eyes of others, and a chance for us to share our experiences back. For years, we've been pioneering new ways for our island to connect with people overseas. We started building these bridges because of those experiences, to let others know that our voices are just as loud and our lives just as rich. There was a time when we were limited by distance and nature and perceived as a small island in a big world. But now we can show how small the world is and how big our island can be. Connecting lives through technology and innovation to be a part of something bigger than ourselves. This is what we set out to do from the start. This is our future. it &E.
Brown tree snakes are an ever-present threat. They can destroy the unique wildlife of the Northern Marianas. They damage electrical networks and raise the cost of electricity. The Division of Fish and Wildlife is working to prevent this through trapping, cargo inspections, and outreach. But we need your help. If you see a brown tree snake, kill it. And then report it by calling 28-SNAKE. Help us preserve the beauty of the CNMI by keeping our islands snake-free. Call the Brown Tree Snake BTS hotline at 28-SNAKE. Welcome back to this weekend edition of the Channel 2 News. Well, it's pretty special to catch sight of a green sea turtle in the ocean. Now, how's it feel to see a baby turtle hatch? Well, this morning, local kids got a first-hand look. Our Chris Nelson has more. There's nothing quite like a good old field trip, and today eco campers got to experience some of the wonders of nature up close. It all started early this morning. Local campers from the Mariana Resort headed for Wing Beach, softly walking down a secluded trail towards the water. They're on their way to one of the only turtle nesting beaches left on the island of Saipan. Jesse Hopday is a turtle expert. In fact, Jesse is as comfortable in the water as he is on land. Here's a clip of him earlier this year bringing a turtle up from the depths below to be measured and tagged. Today he is firmly on land and is digging up the remains of this nest to see if there are any stragglers and he finds some buried treasure much to the delight of his audience. You can, you can watch them and you can touch them gently, okay? Tammy Summers explains to the kids that whether the turtle develops into a boy or girl is determined by the temperature of the sand. We're thinking that most of the turtles that we're producing on Saipan are girls because the sand temperature is so hot. The mom responsible for this nest was probably herself born at Wing Beach between 35 and 40 years ago. These baby turtles face pretty long odds. About a hundred eggs are in a typical nest and it can take almost a thousand eggs to produce a nesting female. Jesse takes measurements from the nest as part of the data collection and then it's time to send these turtles on their way. Tammy lets the kids choose some names for their new friends and then it's time for them to head into the Philippine Sea. Their internal GPS drives them towards the water and the first little one makes a clean entry. Turtle number two, however, has some entry problems and assumes the dreaded turtle position. Luckily, she gets a helping hand and pretty soon she is swimming too. If all goes well, in about 30 years, these turtles will navigate their way back to this very same beach and lay their own set of eggs and the campers today are wishing them a lot of luck. Chris Nelson at Wing Beach for the Channel 2 News. Thank you so much, Chris. We're rooting for those two little guys for the next 30 years. Liberation Day festivities kick off tonight, Friday night, at Garapin Fishing Base with a soft opening. Liberation Day coordinator Ben Camacho says nightly entertainment will begin Friday night and last through Sunday, July 6th. Local entertainment will start at 6 and end at around 11 each night. There will be food and vendors, too. The theme this year... Uh the reunion of honor, I carried that forward and then I decided to go ahead and uh, use that, carry that forward and just add it a uh, tribute to mayors. The coordinator said there is no grand marshal this year in order to honor all of the mayors. The late mayors will be represented by family members who will carry the photos of the dignitaries. The former mayors will be VIPs and recognized on stage according to Camacho. He is still waiting to hear from more past mayors. July 4th is Liberation Day on the island and the annual parade, which is set to start at 9 a.m. The parade will begin at the Quartermaster Road intersection of Beach Road and then travel down Beach Road to Garapan Fishing Base, where the grandstand is located. We have the competitive floats and the non-competitive. Just the, um, the floats alone, we're going to have the we're going to have the past queens and her court, and then we have the current, which will be this year's, and then we have the Manonkus who have their own uh, king and queen. And also, if everything goes well, uh, we've, we've decided to bring in the past queens. 
coronation of the Liberation Day Queen is July 2nd at 6 p.m. It is a secret who will win until that night, according to Camacho. Our umpires can now finally qualify for best dressed. We'll have that story more in sports now. right now at Sour Run Sales. You won't strike out with our 50% off special. Right now, we'll take 50% off your first rental payment. Need a sofa, washing machine, big screen TV, computer? You'll hit a home run with our 50% off special. We're Sour Run Sales, making home farm and families happy. Sour Run Are you looking for fine dining with a great view and a nice and peaceful restaurant surrounding? 360 Restaurant is the place to go. Along with its famous hamburgers and steaks, 360 also offers a variety of pastas and entrees. Its revolving floor will get you a great view of the island from up above as you enjoy your meal. The choice of decoration used within the restaurant provides a peaceful and private setting. So what are you waiting for? Stop by at 360 today. Grow your business with the Channel 2 News. Our professional staff are here to help you market your product, brand, service, or business in the most effective way possible. Be it state-of-the-art video services, graphics, or animation, we will make sure that you reach your target audience. Flame Tree TV, now in all CNMI hotels and most homes. It's your best marketing tool. Buenos sports fans. Buenos sports fans, the DL Invitational Basketball League sent out invitations to its championship last night. Two teams accepted. Pedro Lazama puts the power into island manpower against Shocker Nation in the first semifinal last night at the Gillette Gym. Bart Demapon counters with a 15-foot J at the other end. Butch Kaipat with the baseline drive, the reverse. Ha, basketball is such an easy game. It's also easy to record. Pedro, you know, he doesn't even have to jump to score. That's how easy this game is. <laughs> JP Villanueva with the scoop of hoop. Trying to make it look a little bit harder. Edgar Pangolina, you know where he lives? He lives behind the three point line. Narita, the banker. <laughs> Fans were shocked that Shocker Nation wasn't gelling. Jerome Narita makes the tough shot. Hey, what'd you expect? He's a tough guy. Shocker Nation blows it. Manpower crushes him. 92 to 65. In the second semi, DBT Mechanics handed the San Antonio boys their first loss of the season, 79-78. So it's Island Manpower versus the Mechanics. Sunday, 8 o'clock for all the marbles. When interested in coaching youth basketball teams aged 14 to 18 are asked to email David Demapon at DavidDemapon at Yahoo.com for a new league that's planned to start July the 14th. On Saipan, the men in blue are not always in blue. Umpires here basically grab their own gear and go. While teams have very nice uniforms, not so with the umps. 
and I never heard of a donation for umpires until today. Former umpire and current representative Mario Titano, who once worked the Little League World Series in Williamsport, Pennsylvania, teamed up with other congressmen to make the donation to Saipan Baseball. Tony Rogolofoy, too happy to accept. After witnessing a couple of several uh, games whereby umpires were not properly attired to, to, to call uh, uh, baseball games. So, <clears throat> as a result, from uh, my office, uh, the speaker and uh, Congressman Tony uh, Sablan, I hereby present uh, these items uh, uh, to Little League Baseball as well as uh, Saipan Major League uh, Baseball. Mm -hmm. This is great news for us, uh, you know, both leagues, Saipan Little League and uh, Saipan Baseball League. <coughs> I mean, uh, <coughs> during the season we have a lot of umpires that are lacking the uh, proper attire. So, uh, you know, we have the Saipan Little League and the Saipan Baseball League. We extend our appreciation to Congressman Titano, Congressman Sablan, the Speaker, for do their donation. You know, this is a really good for us, for the program. In honor of July 4th, next week, we have four top plays of the week this week. And for the first time in KSPN2 Sports history, you can actually, well, actually, you cannot see the person who made the top play of the week, but you should be able to guess who that person is. Coming in at number four, it's Melody Johnson weaving through traffic, tiptoeing through three defenders and scoring a goal. Sweet Melody Johnson, top play number four. Coming in at number three, it's Geraldine Castillo with this bender off a free kick into the top right corner of the goal. Top play number three. Coming on number two, it's Butch Kaipat with the rejection that leads to this fast break. Narita behind the back to Ferdy Tobias, Island Manpower, top play number two. And coming on number one, it's the KSPN Sports Reporter who takes this out of bounds ball and kicks it to the other team for them to throw the ball back in. Notice how the sports reporter kicks the ball to the right player in perfect position for her to throw the ball back immediately. Pass me in sports reporter, top play of the week. Here's the wind up and the pitch. I don't believe what I just saw. Today's high 89, the heat index 106, low 70, 79, humidity a sticky 79%. Sunday's, uh, Saturday's forecast mostly sunny, isolated showers, possible thunderstorms, winds light and variable, seas calm as a clam, 2 to 3 feet. High around 89, low 79, sunrise at 549, high tide at 717, low tide at 237, sunset at 650. Jillian and Brad, what do you think of that top play of the week? That was probably, uh, forget the World Cup, I mean, that's the kind of soccer I want to watch. On it just didn't TV. look like one continuous shot, so <laughs> he definitely knows how to uh, work with a camera. He's a man of many talents. He is Bob Goldeen. <laughs> he is the most interesting man alive. But <laughs> now, I do have to steal his thunder and say it's official. The weekend starts right now. Good night, Commonwealth.